I was invited to deliver the conference lecture at a conference organized by Ernest and Ibrahim Foundation on October 1, 2020 in Abuja, Nigeria. The theme of the conference was Nigeria at 60, Sustainable and Efficient Democracy, Issues on Accountability and Transparency in Government. The Fixing Nigeria Conference was an initiative of Ernest Obin Anwosu and Rukwia Iyayi Ibrahim's Ernest and Ibrahim Foundation, a youth civil group. At that conference, I spoke on the topic, Accountability and Transparency, Core Values for Efficient Leadership. And this is a recording of my views as shared at the conference, because I am convinced that a wider audience needs to hear it. Yes. I have not been in public service, nor have I served in government at any level. It's the same reason why you're not ever going to find me where people in government are being bashed and insulted. I always wonder what I will do if I were in their shoes. In government, I mean. And as a rule, I speak only on what I have lived through and triumphed over. That is not to say that I approve of the conduct and values of everyone in government. Note that I have not addressed them as leaders. Leadership is earned, not elected or appointed. And many of our people in government and out of government have not earned the right to be addressed as leaders. Let me start with the definition of the two values, accountability and transparency. Webster's Dictionary defines accountability as the quality or state of being accountable, an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. Transparency is the act of being transparent. When you are transparent, you invite trust by revealing that you have nothing to hide. You establish yourself as an honest and credible person in the eyes of others. From these definitions, we can see that Accountability and transparency are self-driven values. They are not compelled or legislated by policy. Accountability and transparency are leadership values. You either cultivate the right values or you don't. Transformation begins with me and with you. What are your values? What do you stand for? What do you really believe in? Each of us has a right to do and say what we want no doubt but we also have a responsibility to do and say the right and proper thing especially if we truly desire to earn the right to be called leaders we are all products of three things one hereditary the families we were born into it all starts from what is discussed at your dinner table at home secondly the environment we grew up in and thirdly the role models we submitted ourselves to we can't change hereditary, but the other two can be changed and need to be reviewed constantly to be sure that they can take you and I to that outstanding future state that we desire. When we see a failure of accountability and transparency in an individual in government, that failure is a result of one or more of these three factors. Hereditary, the families they're born into, because it all starts with what goes on in their homes. Or secondly, the environment they grew up in. And thirdly, the role models they submitted themselves to. Here's my story. I was born in Kaduna to a civil service family. Period. I grew up in Kano, where I attended St. Louis Primary School, then secondary school, Federal Government College, uh, Lagos, and Ijaniki. My heritage and environment were relatively good. So also were the people I submitted myself to as role models. Then I went to University of Valori. It is at the university that I got corrupted. As I submitted myself to the wrong role models, I joined bad groups. We did terrible things. And I ended up graduating with a third class. So, in spite of my relatively good heritage and environment, I submitted myself to the wrong role models. I did. Thankfully, God ordained that I meet my wife at that same University of Valori. She was my route to correcting the wrong values and habits that I had picked up in university. If I had let my childhood experiences shape me, I certainly won't be here delivering the lectures I shared with this group. Why am I sharing this? It is customary to hold our leaders, our upbringing, 
parental and environment responsible for our current fate and blame everyone else for our inability to be who we really want to be. While that could be through in most cases, it's time to end that cycle of blame. You can't wait for Nigeria to provide the opportunities. You have to grab it by getting involved. You can have a significantly better future from your past by being intentional and careful with who you associate with, the role models you submit yourself to, and the environment you operate within. Until you are hungry for change, nothing significant will happen to you or to Nigeria. Please, don't be contented with your current position. Desire more. Desire is a fuel for growth. At the root of every success is a strong desire backed by consistent action and sacrifice. And that journey starts with who you associate with. Get involved. Who are you associating with? I know we often wonder how things can change. So much wrath and relatively few people with positive values and character out there. I get it. There may be just a few true leaders that are accountable and transparent out there. But that few is more than enough. Yes, transformation and positive change, just like negative values, are always initiated, propagated, and sustained by a few. Always. So also in climes where things work well, it's always the few that initiate and drive change. Always. And the most important title in any nation, by the way, is not the president or the governor or senator. The most important title is citizen. That is why, rather than just speak on the problem as and its origins, let me profile some solutions. Again, taken from my practical experience, with proven results. To be that outstanding citizen of Nigeria requires intentional effort. It will not happen by chance. It requires intentional and consistent effort on your part. I mean, the youth, 32 and younger, I am now closer to 60 than 50. That process starts with, one, a definition of who you are. Do a SWOT analysis of yourself. Thereafter, determine who or what you want to be in the future, in the next five to ten years. And thirdly, finally articulate how to get there. While conferences and workshops for discussions are critical in the process of transformation, Nigeria can't be fixed in one or three or ten conferences because it takes time to move an individual from where they are to where they want to be. And never forgetting the God factor, always ask to be guided and to hear from him. Many are held back indeed because the outcome they desire appear impossible from where they are now. Or the step forward is fraught with lots of obstacles. I get it. I've been there. Just start. The process is always more important than the outcome. Always. Progress may appear slow, but our Nigeria is not where we were two to ten years ago. No. But we must get involved in governance. We must get involved in governance. The youths must get involved. Note that I did not say in politics. Because we all are already in politics, actively or otherwise, from the time we begin to make choices. The sad commentary is that majority of youths do not even vote. We must provide platforms for people with positive values and upbringing to be heard. We must be, be detribalized in everything we do. Everything good or bad is created twice. First from our thinking, then it is birthed in the physical. A critical part of that process of creation, thinking, is however triggered by what we hear or see, or who we heard or saw it from. Where our source lacks accountability and transparency, the outcome would be transformed. That same value system that is negative from generation to generation. The human capacity for denial is, inf is infinite. Anyone can convince anyone of anything if they already want to believe it, especially someone in a position of authority or that they look up to. They will continue to vote against their own interests till it's too late. That is cognitive dissonance, by the way. It's like the Russian roulette. Leaders must therefore take responsibility, which is the ability to respond. That is accountability. It is not what, it's not that they will be right all of the time. No leader is right all the time. True leaders take all the counsel they get, they review and analyze the options, then they act. And once they act, 
they take responsibility for their actions. They acknowledge also their mistakes when they make them. They do. That is accountability and transparency. Here's my advice to the youths, and indeed to all of us. Nigeria really is not the geographical space. Nigeria is you and I. You need to take personal responsibility for your life, for our lives. I know that it is not a very palatable proposition. To be honest, you cannot transfer moral burden away from you to God, or to your parents, or to people in government, or to your boss, or even your pastor, or your imam. True accountability and transparency starts with you and I taking personal responsibility for our decisions, for our choices, including of who to vote into office and who we submit ourselves to. As I begin to round up, let me share an excerpt from a young uh, reverse mentor friend of mine, Chukwe Meka Ezeugu, from his recent article he titled, The Self-Made Victim. Every time there's an impact, we look for the cause, for the point of origin, for something to blame or someone to blame. What caused it? What led to that? Those are questions we ask after the fact, to justify the act or to maybe to explain it. What if I tell you that you are your greatest causal factor? What if I reveal to you that you consistently create the realities you inhabit? What if I say that nothing happens to you, but everything happens because of you? What if I say that your life was caused by you? What if I tell you that if you want to change your current realities, you need to change something in you? I read somewhere that human beings are hardwired to act in alignment with our self-identity. Always. We can never rise higher than our personal story. You can't. You see, you are living out a story you scripted for yourself. If you want your story to change, change your scripts. Believe me. Our reality was not created by our circumstances. It was created by our self-image before and in the face of the circumstances we find ourselves. Whether you turn out a victim or a victor, always remember you made you. God bless Nigeria. Happy Diamond Jubilee to all Nigerians and lovers of Nigerians out there. Happy Independence Anniversary.